All right, uh, in this tutorial, we are going to be walking through the process of setting up a virtual machine on Amazon's cloud computing network so that you can do your uh, homework three. So uh, linked off of the homework page is a tutorial uh, written by ACMS that includes all of the steps that we're about to go through. Uh, so please read this ahead of time, and then uh, the, we're going to walk through these steps uh, kind of one by one. So the first thing that we're going to do is log into the portal that um, ACMS created, and this portal will actually connect us to Amazon's uh, control panel. So we're going to select uh, CSE 124. I'm not exactly sure what this part of this will look like for you, but once you've clicked your name in the class, you should be delivered to this console. So this is the real Amazon Cloud uh, control panel. As you can see, it has a whole bunch of different features on the left, uh, and we're only going to be using a, a very small uh, set of features from Amazon. But we are using a very important one, which is running virtual machines. So the first thing that I want to draw your attention to is the fact that um, there's a number of different regions around the world, and each one has these different data centers in it, and they are selected from this menu option here at the top. So you can see that there's a data center in Virginia, Ohio, California, Oregon, there are three in, in Europe, one in Canada, Singapore, Sydney, Seoul, Tokyo, Mumbai, and, and Sao Paulo. And so um, we are going to be using four of these regions for our homework. Uh, and to start a VM, a virtual machine in one of these regions, you're going to want to select it from this list. And then I'll show you how to, how to launch that instance. So let's pick, uh, how about Ireland, just to kind of get started. So we select... Uh, the region that we want, and it will take us to a, a dashboard specific to that region. So we've now logged in, and you can see on the top right it says Ireland. So when we start a VM now, it will be started in Ireland. Uh, and so in order to start our VM, we're going to click this blue Launch Instance button. And our VM can run a bunch of different operating systems, and they're all listed here. Uh, we're going to pick the default Linux installation, which is the first option. Okay, now there's a bunch of different types of VMs in terms of the power and configuration of those VMs. And you can see them all here. There must be about 40 or 50 or so. Some of these are really big. They have, um, you know, this one has two terabytes of memory and 128 CPUs and a 25 gigabit per second network. So that's pretty insane. Some of these are optimized uh, for GPUs. So like these, for example, have a bunch of different GPUs in them, um, and then there's some that have FPGAs in them. Uh, we're going to be using one of these general purpose instances here at the top called the T2.micro instance. So this has one CPU, which is a um, 2.5 gigahertz Intel Xeon. So you get one core of that CPU and you get one gigabyte of memory. Uh, this will be uh, totally adequate for this uh, particular homework. So we're gonna select that T2.micro instance type, and click the next button. We can accept all of these different default options. And so we go down here to add storage. Uh, we accept this default option. I think you get like 100 gigabytes. No, I guess you get eight gigabytes of local storage again, which is gonna be fine for our purposes. Uh, we're gonna skip uh, tags uh, and we're gonna get to this page related to security groups. Now it's important on this page that we have to make a change to the default. So we need to select an existing security group right here and it lists some of the different security groups we could use and one of them has 124 in it and so we're going to click on that to select that security group now if you look down here at the bottom this is kind of like the hd access file from your web server project you can see a list of allow deny rules uh, that apply to the security group so uh, incoming TCP connections to port 22. So that's the SSH protocol are allowed from everybody. So that's what 0.0.0 slash .0, 0 means. We are also allowing all incoming connections uh, to ports anywhere between 8 and 9,000. So if you try to run a server on say port 5,000, it will be firewalled. So you can think of this machine as having a firewall on it that it's going to block all incoming connections except for SSH and except for anything coming in 8,000 to 9,000. Okay, so now that we've selected the security group, we can review all of the different options here and hit this blue launch button. Okay, 
Now, once the virtual machine starts, it will not um, use a password to, you will not use a password to access it. That's considered pretty insecure. Instead, you're going to be using SSH keys. So we need to create a key in order to um, register that key with the virtual machine so we can log into that machine. Now, uh, one kind of idiosyncrasy of Amazon is that each of the regions is going to have a separate key. So if you create a virtual machine in Ireland, you're going to have to create a key pair for that region. Uh, the same is true for Brazil, the same is true for Korea uh, and India. So we are going to select the create a new key pair option. And uh, there's a naming convention that ACMS wants us to use. And I think it includes putting the course name in the key title. So we're going to type in like your username. And because each key is unique to a region, I'm going to write down Ireland and then I'm going to give it CSE 124. So now my key is named gimporter-ireland-csc124. Okay, so once we've given it a name, we're going to download it. And um, once we have downloaded it, we can, let's save, uh, we can go ahead and launch that instance site. Okay, so once we've clicked the launch button, what is now happening is it, in the, it is in the process of launching. Okay. Okay, so we have um, told the AWS to launch the instance and we can click on, on the identifier of that instance and it will take us to our um, little dashboard. And now we can see that there is a line for our new instance. So it's uh, got an instance ID, which is some unique identifier. It's a t2.micro. It's running in the EU West 1C data center, which is Ireland. And it shows that it's actually running. If we look down here, we can see a bunch of status information about when it got started uh, and some other information about it. Now, what's really important is on the top right here. So this lists the host name and domain name of that instance type. We can see that it's ec 2 da 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 Okay, so let's copy and paste the um, IP address, the, the host name, and let's go to where we're going to log into it. So we have a machine right here that has our um, key that we just downloaded. And now we need to log in. So we're going to run SSH and we're going to specify this key that has been associated with our virtual machine. And now we have to give the username and the host name. So the username, this is a little bit um, uh, surprising if you haven't used EC2 before, is EC2-user. So it's not going to be like your normal username or, or your ACMS username. It's just always going to be ec2-user at, and then you put the IP address of that host. Okay, so once we try to log in, uh, ah, uh, okay, so um, one, I'm glad that this came up actually because you may run into the same problem I just ran into, which is that SSH does not like it if the key has a um, is not the correct permissions. And so uh, if you run into this problem, you can type this command right here on the name of your key and it will actually um, it'll fix the permissions problem so that uh, you don't run into this. All right, so now that we've done that, let's try this again. So we're going to uh, run our command again and there we go. So now we have just logged into this virtual machine running in Ireland, and uh, we now have this VM. So we can create files, we can uh, look at uh, what kind of CPU it has, uh, look at the network, and we can see the IP address that we got, etc. So you own this machine. Once you've got this VM running, you can do anything you want, including you can run as root if you need to, you can install software, etc. So you'll be able to use this to actually um, execute your homework three. Okay, now before we, uh, once we finish doing our experiment, once we finish doing uh, whatever we're going to do for homework three, it's time to turn off our VM. It's very important. We want to make sure to disable the virtual machine. Uh, otherwise, it'll keep accruing charges and we don't want that to happen. Now, you don't have to pay out of pocket. We have preloaded every student's account with $50 worth of credits, which is more than enough to do all of the, the research for the homework. Okay, but in order to turn off your virtual machine, you go back to this console, and for each region that you're running a VM in, you have to select that region and it'll list it right here. 
And if you see this green running indicator, that means that it is currently running and you're paying for it, or UCSD is paying for it. So to turn that off, what we're going to do is select the row that has the VM, go up here to, op to Actions, scroll down to Instance State, and hit Stop. And when we hit Stop, it'll ask us if we want to do that, and we tell it we do, and it will now begin turning off that virtual machine. Now it takes about 30 seconds to a minute sometimes to actually turn off the VM, but once we have told it to stop and it switches to this stopping state, that means we're no longer being built. So we're going to do this for each of the different regions that we've started VMs up in and make sure that we've stopped those regions or stopped those instances. Okay, at this point, you should have everything you need to do to get started on running um, uh, your experiments for homework three. All right, good luck.